In this video, you're going to discover the three best SEO tips I used as a beginning blogger to drive hundreds of thousands of page views to my blog posts, to my offers, to ultimately make sales and affiliate commissions, even as a beginning blogger. And if you stick around until the end, I'll share with you the one hack I did differently when I started my last website and why it's paying off so well. Okay, let's go ahead and dive in. Hey guys, I'm John from IncomeMesh.com. Welcome to the channel where I help you find the perfect tools and strategies for your next project online. And in this video, I wanna dive right into tip number one, which is before you even start your website, before you even write your first blog post, I want you to get an idea, at least a framework of your overall site organization. And the site organization is important because not only are you hoping that people find your website, you're hoping that Google finds and organizes and categorizes your website and the content on it nicely and appropriately so that when future visitors come and look for your topic, whatever your niche or your topic is, Google has a good understanding of what you do, how you serve your audience, and they can serve up your web page whenever they type that query in. Okay, so that's a little bit meta, so I'm gonna make it a bit more uh, tactical here with you on my computer screen. And in this example, you know, in my family, we are considering picking up a little puppy, we're moving into a big house tomorrow, which has a yard ready for the kids and for the dog. And I grew up with a golden retriever, so I really wanna get another golden retriever. Anyways, so in this example, let's assume we want to have something about dogs, something about dogs, uh, dog training, and specifically about golden retrievers. And we'll talk about the reason why we're niching down to golden retrievers in step number two. But let's go ahead and assume that we want to have a website about dog training and dog toys and things like that. So when it comes to site organization, I don't want you to spread yourself too thin and try to write about everything and anything that comes to your mind. So in this case, I could talk about dogs, right? I could make a dog blog and talk about all the different breeds of dogs and how to train every different breed of dog and all this stuff. But when you're doing that, you're jumping yourself into a huge red ocean where there's tons of competition. So I want you to think one, two, or three levels deeper than that main topic and focus in on a couple of those big questions that are in that second or third level down. So as an example, underneath dogs could be golden retrievers. That's a certain type of dog. And then underneath golden retrievers, there could be how do you train your golden retriever? So golden retriever training, that's probably a second or third level down uh, topic. And then maybe you wanna spoil your dog like we spoil our kids. So we'll say golden retriever toys could be another one. And the last one would be, you know, how do you raise a puppy while you have children in the house? And that would be the situation that I would be in. So these are a couple of topics where you could write for days, for weeks, for months, for years on any one of these topics and still be hyper focused and hyper organized. So then how do you come up with the topics for this second or third level down idea? Let's go ahead and just kind of think like a um, think like a reporter here and I'll put out a couple of ideas here for you. All right, so just like a reporter, you know, those magic questions, who, what, where, when, why, and of course, how, I can't forget that one. So I want you to go ahead and just start brainstorming topic ideas, and then you can validate them later. I'll do a full video on topic idea validation. But in this case, let's say, so who? So so are golden retrievers good dogs for parents? Now, I'm not going through and looking at any data yet. I just want to let you know how to start brainstorming out some ideas and giving you a framework for brainstorming content ideas. Before you go and you write all these blog posts, there is a validation effort that would need to go into it. But I'm going to put out a few different ideas on each one of these questions just to give you a thought process of how you can organize your content. All right, so I just brainstormed out a couple of different golden retriever obedience ideas. So just to run through a couple of them, just to get your mind thinking about how to go through and process out and brainstorm out these content ideas. So under the who, you know, who is the best golden retriever breeder, dog breeder in my area, your local area, or even you could research it for each different state and make a blog post about that. Uh, what is the best golden retriever training routine or training protocol, different ways, different synonyms you can use to try to get different ways of people searching for your terms. Um, when, how young can you start training your golden retriever? When should golden retrievers be potty trained? Where, where should I train my golden retriever? Where should I hide my shoes? You know, in individual applications uh, to prevent my golden retriever from eating them. Why, why are golden retrievers good dogs for training? What are the benefits of training good golden retriever early? Obviously this is, doesn't say why, but it's a why, it's a reason type of question. So it gets your mind thinking that way. And then the how would go on forever. How do I train my golden retriever to sit, to stay, to stand, to speak, to pet, to stop biting me, things like that. So if you go through here, what are you doing? You're basically creating an outline for an entire website. And I like doing it with simple bullet point lists. Again, 
as much as I'm a spreadsheet nerd, keeping things simple here is great because it also helps you understand where are you strong and where are you weak? Where do you have a lot of content ideas? Where do you need maybe some help and to do more keyword research? Once you have these, you can see if you were to go and search in for a website about golden retrievers, you would want to find a site that has content like this, that where it's nicely structured and, uh, you're clearly focused in on a specific task. Uh, if you had a golden retriever post and then you had a haircut post and then you had a random tech review post and a parenting post, you know, that website doesn't inspire as much confidence in either the, the searcher, the reader, or in the search engine to help you get seen in those results. So you wanna make sure you organize your content into silos. And again, you could do this for each one. I would pick maybe three or four silos at most to have the most success in this area. So the second tip is to go from long tail to short tail as your website grows in traffic and authority. So let me show you what long tail and short tail means by just kind of writing them out here. All right, so a short tail example would be something like this, how to train my dog, right? Very common, a lot of people are searching for how to train my dog on the internet. But if you come in with your new blog, your new website here in 2020 or 2021, wherever you're watching this video, and you try to go after how to train my dog, uh, it's going to have too much competition for your individual website to be seen. And if nobody's finding your website, Google is not giving you any juice, any love and helping you grow in your own traffic and in your own uh, business. But a long tail example of this exact same term could be how to train my golden retriever one level down to stop biting. That's another thing. How to train my golden retriever to stop biting my toddler. Okay. Like that's a terrifying thought. I have a toddler. I don't like this, but if I do get a golden retriever, which is probably going to happen, this is one of the things I'll be searching for. So there's not going to be as many people targeting this exact phrase. So if you come in with a new website, but you write an article specifically about this and you put this under the how section, which I have here. So I, even I went longer here. I said, how do I train my golden retriever to stop biting? But I could even add in my toddler. If I went for a phrase like that, even with a brand new website, I would likely get ranked on the first page of Google because there wouldn't be as much competition. At least I don't think so. I haven't researched that exact topic, but you get the idea. Um, now, does that mean that you're going to get a ton of traffic from it? Maybe, maybe not. Probably not. And you can do some uh, keyword research to determine how many people are actually searching for that phrase. It's not going to be as many. Obviously, more people will be looking for this phrase, how to train my dog versus this phrase, how to train my golden retriever to stop biting my toddler. But if you start to build up little bits of traffic by consistently putting out long tail keywords, what you're going to find is instead of having this one post where if, if your traffic is like this and you have this one massive post that takes off your website, this is one thing that you're just going to have to get lucky on. If that happens, it's possible you could go that way. I wouldn't build a business off of it. Instead, I would want to do something like this. You write a little post about a short tail or a, a very long tail keyword and you write another one and you write another one and another one right um, and over time you're just putting out these content pieces that are slowly growing and eventually you can start to go after a shorter tail keyword so for example uh, once you've gotten good traffic off of something like this long you could maybe get rid of that and write a more pillar post on how to train my golden retriever and you can link in all the other articles you've already written and maybe that traffic can really move up your website and take it to a new level from there. But in general, going from longer tail is easier for starter websites than it is shorter tail. As you build authority, Google will start to serve up your website more frequently in the results, and then you can start targeting more competitive keyword traffic, okay? All right, the third and final tip before my hack is to aim not for position one on Google, but aim for position zero in the beginning. Now, what is position zero? Well, position zero is what's called the snippet in Google. And so here, for example, I wrote a post a couple of days ago, about three days ago now, on a pretty long, t it was a short tail keyword. It was simply a tool and a review was what I wrote it on. But I also knew that because there wasn't a lot of competition on this tool yet, that when it starts to pick up in traffic, my website would show up. And I didn't just go for position one on the search term. So position one would be right here. Um, I, I'm somewhere down here on the first page for this one. Uh, this is my YouTube video. Anyways, um, I went for the snippet. Meaning if they search for pricing, if they search for cost, if they search for things like that, I wanted to make sure that my website would show up even before the first result. This can even show up before the ads in some cases. So how do you do this? How do you get to where my website is showing up 
right below. And not only is it showing up, but it's giving you the answer right there before they even click through. Now, some people are negative about this, the idea about the whole snippets is preventing people from clicking through to your website and they're not seeing your ads anymore. They're not seeing your opt-in pages and things like that. Guys, that's the way things are going. Things are getting more convenient for the end user and that's overall a good thing. Uh, simply overcome it by writing such good content that they still wanna click through, all right? Uh, so how do you do this? Well, what I like to do, what I like to recommend is in your article, if you're asking a question like, how much does influ influencer soft cost? Let's do that. All right, so what I like to think about this is if you're targeting after a keyword phrase, like how much does influencer soft cost? I want you to somewhere in your article, preferably closer to the top, directly answer that question in the most helpful and succinct way possible, okay? So I probably didn't even do the best job here because I mentioned another tool in the same sentence, but I just straight up say you can get influencer soft right now for $497 for life, which by the way is true. If you're interested, uh, click down below. There'll be a review on this sim simply because I'm using it as an example in this video. Uh, but if you can, let's say you have your, your blog post headline here, you have your featured image, you have all your content. If this is your blog layout, somewhere around here in the first, let's say the first four or so paragraphs, I want you to answer the question that you're trying to get the snippet for. So how much does influencer soft cost? I want you to try to answer that question as close to the top of the article and as succinctly as possible. Now you might be wondering, well, if I answer it so quickly, what's the point of the rest of the blog post? Don't worry about that. You can answer the question and then break that sucker down, pull back the layers of the onion and flesh out a really solid blog post on the topic. But that snippet is extremely valuable because if you can be more precise and better at how you answer simple questions on Google, even smaller ranked, you know, lower level blogs can rank high uh, with this strategy. All right. So now that is the three tips that I have for uh, improving your SEO in 2020 and beyond as a beginning blogger. But what is the hack? So the quick story behind this one is I left my job in 2018 and I did not start from scratch on my website. And there's a reason for that because all the tips I give you are totally true, but there's one thing that you simply cannot speed up and that is time. And Unfortunately, it just takes Google some time before they really start to build authority for you and let blog posts that you wrote a couple of days ago be crawled and updated and ranked on first page of Google just like that. Okay, so if you look at my website right now on Ahrefs, which is a pretty nice keyword research spot, you can see this metric here called DR and that's domain rank. Basically how authoritative is a website in the overall domain. So mine is a 60, which isn't bad. It could be better, it should be better, but you know, we're taking this uh, day by day. Um, it, but that's something that ultimately time is required to build up your domain rank. So what can you do if you're really you know, excited to get started and you don't have all that time to build it up from scratch, you can go to a website like flippa.com. Let me show you that website here. And on flippa.com, their entire business model is to help you buy and sell websites and online businesses. So if you have a specific passion and you wanna be able to follow that passion, before you go and just buy your own domain and get started from scratch, I'd urge you to go ahead and check out websites like flippa.com. There's a link down below if you wanna learn more about it. Um, and search for your topic, see what's out there. Uh, so let's go to the homepage here and show you what it looks like. So the number one platform to buy and sell online businesses, this is pretty cool. And there's a whole business model here if you also wanna go on the opposite end and create a bunch of websites and then pop on Flip It and try to sell them for a profit. Uh, that's a pretty fun one as well. So you can come here and look at established sites. These are sites that have been around for a while and they're likely gonna have better domain rank than others that are just getting started. And so, you know, banks, Hawaii, you know, a lot of ones here, you can kind of scroll through and search for your ind individual ideas, what you like, but I pulled out a couple that I thought were pretty interesting. So cost evaluation, how much different things cost? Pretty simple, right? So it's selling for 6,745 US dollars, but the website's eight years old. That's a pretty awesome price for that age of a website. And costevaluation.com, that's a pretty clear domain. Like this is one that, as I mentioned in the silos, it's very siloed out, like how much does stuff cost? That's a pretty nicely organized website and you can see what profit they're making here. So you can click over, you can do some research on them, you can take a look at the website itself, see what they're doing, see when the last blog post was written, check them out on um, uh, Ahrefs and see how they're ranking and what they're doing, how they're trending and make a purchase decision from there. Uh, it's It worked out really well for me because if you're one of those who sometimes maybe struggles to focus 
if you buy something that already has the focus there, you can just carry the torch and move on. Whereas if you just get started and you're writing in post number one and then post number two, it can be a little discouraging in the beginning and a little overwhelming. So sometimes having that jump start is a big benefit. Again, if you're interested in learning more about Flippa or any of the tools and resources I mentioned on this video, there will be links down below. Uh, some of them will be affiliate links because I do promote some of these products. Uh, but again, that comes at no additional cost to you and it helps support the YouTube channel here. All right. So those are three tips for better SEO in 2020, as well as my hack of what I did to get a high ranking, high authority website from day one. And that's about it. The one thing I will have to warn you is if you find a website that's undervalued, meaning you see potential in it, but it's not really generating the revenue, it's not being sold for much, it's kind of analogous to buying an old fix and flip type of house, maybe a foreclosure. Sometimes these websites go abandoned. My website was abandoned. There was no blogging on it for like two years when I bought it. But it had kind of the framework there. It kind of was in the same niche. It was workable. And so when you see some of my rankings are going down, it's because I'm still turning the ship of what Google sees my website as to being more of my content and less of what was there before. But ultimately, it's still a huge shortcut and a huge time saver. I hope this video was helpful. If you enjoyed it, hit that subscribe button, the like button, leave a comment, all this cool stuff. And the question for you for today is, have you ever thought about buying and selling a website? Let me know in that down in the description below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.